Good morning, everybody. Uh, well, it is an exciting morning uh, this morning at Pine Grove, and not just because I'm here. Um, we have not one, not two, but three baptismal candidates this morning, uh, so we are very excited about that. Uh, yes, go ahead. Applause. Yes, please. And then towards the end of the service, we get to partake of the Lord's Supper. Um, so, uh, as an old pastor used to say, if that doesn't get your fire burning, your wood's all wet. Uh, so, th this is a, it's so exciting. It's what we're here for. It's what we do everything uh, for. Uh, but real quick, before we get into the baptisms, uh, let's just reflect on Scripture a little bit and what Jesus said about it. Uh, so, we're going to read the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mount where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age." So the, the, the last thing in Matthew that, that Jesus says to the disciples is to go and make disciples and baptize. Um, and so how humbling is it, how amazing is it that we get to be a part of that this morning uh, to see some new, uh, new brothers and sisters come to that knowledge. Not to be saved, but to give that outward demonstration of that change that's already taken place. Um, so but Megan's going to come up and share some bios of each of the candidates as they come out. Good morning. I thought they'd already be in there. There you go. <laughs> Our first baptismal candidate is Alexis Hackney. She is 16 years old and a junior at Parkersburg High School. Her hobbies include reading, being outside, and hanging out with family and friends. Her mother is Rebecca Hackney, father Chris Hackney, and stepmother Cassie Hackney. Congratulations, Alexis. We're so proud of you. Okay. Give me one second. I'm going to read her something what baptism is. This is what baptism is an act by which we declare before God, angels, and men that we yield ourselves to be the Lord's that we are dead to the world and risen again to newness of life through the power of Jesus Christ. So, go ahead and grab your wrist. Get your notes. All right. Lexi, in obedience to the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ and upon your open and unashamed confession of faith to him as your personal Savior, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The next baptismal candidate is Caitlin McNamar. She is also 16 and a junior at Williamstown High School. Her hobbies include uh, following God, band, and reading. Her mother is Cassie Hackney, stepfather Chris Hackney, and father Josh McNamar. In the obedience to the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ and upon your open and unashamed confession and faith, in him is your personal Savior. I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations, Katie. We're so proud of you. And her brother, Dakota, is next. Come on out, Dakota. His hobbies include basketball, biking, longboarding, and walking. He is 14 years old, turning 15 Wednesday, and he goes to Williamstown High School. Um, his mother is Cassie Hackney, stepfather Chris Hackney, and father also Josh McNamara. Congratulations, Dakota. In obedience to the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ, and upon your open and unashamed confession of faith in him as your personal Savior, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I 
I want to I want to pray over this uh, opportunity. It's it's such an uh, exciting day. There are many things going on as we'll we'll cover throughout the service this morning. Uh, just just remember, there's there's a lot to be thankful for, and there are many people that still need prayer. And uh, God is still performing miracles. And again, more on that a little bit later. But uh, just bow with me now as we pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, God. We can open up our service and worship to you with three folks coming forward as a public profession to tell everyone here that they have died to their old selves, that they're seeking now a relationship with the Holy Spirit, seeking His guidance, seeking His will for their lives and the direction for their lives, Lord. God, I pray that we are able to stand firm with them, give them examples, Lord, to live by, be uh, the mentors that they need as we disciple them through their lives, Lord. God, we thank you. And God, this is just the beginning of the process of sanctification. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I thought there was a video. Sorry. <laughs> I thought, oh, I'm out, of, I'm out of order. Let's all stand and sing. <laughs> service this morning. Amen. Amen. All right. A few business things to take care of real quick first. Um, We do have the prayer cards in your pews. If anybody has a prayer request, you can fill that out and then drop it in the plates whenever they come by. Um, There's a place where you can put your name and phone number if you would like contacted about it, but it can remain anonymous, not unanimous, anonymous uh, if you so desire. Um, And then there's these Get Connected cards. Uh, Please fill these out. We'd like for you to be involved if you want to be involved. There's um, different boxes you can choose if you have a special interest or anything, Uh, especially if it's your first time here. We'd like to know some more about you. I'd like to, to be able to reach out to you. So if you are interested, please fill those out. 
Um, also, do keep in mind any other additional announcements are in our bulletins if you need to look at those. Uh, plenty of things going on. And, and like I said, we would really like for you to be involved if you feel so moved. Uh, but check that out. Make sure you read through it and see what's going on so you'll know what your church family is doing this week. Uh, we're going to open up with a short devotion. Uh, last week, Brian talked about being light bearers. Um, and, and what does that mean? Uh, well, the, the easy vacation Bible school answer is that you have Christ in your heart or Christ in your life. Uh, that Christ has become part of you as we just saw these three go through baptism. Um, kind of a reminder, but what does it really mean to have Christ himself in our life? Well, he described it this way. Uh, in Matthew 5, verses 13 and following. Uh, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on the hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So we, we sing that song as kids, this little light of mine. I'm not, I'm not going to sing it. I'm not going to torture you all that way. But I'm going to let it shine. We're not going to hide it under a bushel. We're not going to let Satan it out. Um, well, that's what he's talking about here. That light inside of us should be evident in our hearts. It should be evident to those around us. We should be like a city on a hill that can't be hidden. Uh, uh, we talked about this a little bit with the youth uh, Wednesday night um, to kind of set up where we're going to be heading. But... Uh, in our day, it's hard to think about what it is to be completely dark because we've got street lights everywhere, we've got signs, we've got cell phone lights, we've got car lights. Everywhere we go, there's some kind of light. Like it, we have what we call light pollution now. There's so much light. Uh, but if you're ever in a place, maybe out in the woods, out in the country somewhere where it is completely dark, you can see a house sitting on a hill from a great distance. And that's what this is talking about. It should be evident from a distance that we have that light inside of us. Paul talks about it uh, in Romans 12, too, where he says to be conformed no longer to the patterns of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So to be transformed, that we're not conformed, we're not like the world any longer, but we're changed, we're something different now. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he says that we are a new creation, that the old is gone and the new has come. That we're not even the same as we were beforehand, but we're completely new. But maybe he put it best in Ephesians 5 when he says to be imitators of God. I'm sorry, in Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. But be imitators of God, therefore as dearly loved children, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So that we are living in love, that we are imitating it, it, imitators of God. And it's that quick transition to be imitators of God and then to live a life of love. That's what he says. It's that quick transition that that's what we should be doing. It doesn't say anything else, that we should be imitators of God and that we should live a life of love. So that's what it means to be that light bearer, to have Christ in our heart, to be unhideable, that it's a noticeable difference, to be a new creation, conform no longer to this world, and to be living a life of love within our congregation as well as outside of these walls. If you'll bow with me, please. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you overwhelmed um, by everything that's already <coughs> gone on this morning, uh, by the three souls that made their outward profession of, of acknowledging you as their Savior. Uh, God, and we pray for each one of them that they might... Um, they might travel alongside you daily and, and others would come alongside them and lead them in the way they should go. Uh, but God, that, that it will truly be a life-changing experience for them. Um, God, as we looked at this short devotion about what it means to be a light bearer or to have Christ inside of our lives, I pray that you would help each of us to take some time to reflect on that, to, to examine whether we are unhideable as we are in the world. If we are truly no longer conformed to the world, and that we are living a life of love. God, be with the rest of this service, and, and thank you for giving us this opportunity to worship you. In your name I pray. Amen.
It's good to see everyone this morning, and we'd love for you to stand and worship with us this morning. We're going to be singing in Christ alone, and just remember that our joy is found in Christ alone because of his amazing love for us. Just sing it to him this morning.
across this day to come together in a worship service and fellowship one with another. And Holy Father, we remind ourselves that nothing is hidden from you. You have placed within our care many blessings over which we are to serve as managers for you. Help us, Lord, to be your servants in every area of our lives. We present to you this morning a portion of the blessings of the fruit that you have given us as an act of worship. Accept them, bless them for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I think they were trying to hide our mics on us. Is that a hint? <laughs> we're back again. This morning we have a real treat. Bob Winker's going to sing lead for us this morning. And he's really pretty good. 
Uh, we'll be, uh, we were excited today because we're going to be singing at a reunion out at the Middle Ridge Baptist Church this afternoon. So if you don't have anything to do around 1 o'clock or so, come out and join us. We're really looking forward to it. I don't know about tomorrow I just live from day to day I don't borrow from its sunshine for its sky may turn to gray I don't worry about the future for I know what Jesus said and today I'll walk beside him for he knows what is ahead. Many, Many things about tomorrow I don't see. Brian wouldn't let me just stay on that side of the, the stage. He said, we've always been on this side, so we have to move it. <laughs> my, my, aren't we particular this morning? All right, come on up. How was 
was your first week of school? Good. Was it awesome? <gasps> teacher's really awesome. Well, your teacher's always awesome. You always know who your teacher is, right? All right. So give me a thumbs up if you had a great week of school. Yay. All right. Well, who remembers what we talked about last week? I needed to borrow your muscles last week, remember? Oh, come on up. Great to see you. Hello. We had some sticks last week, right? And I borrowed some of your all's muscles and we tried to break them, right? Were we able to break the single stick? One stick's pretty easy to break, right? Uh, this is a pretty ordinary stick, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing special about it. Is there anything living on it? No. No, no. Just, a, just a plain little old stick, right? You could snap it with your thumb, couldn't you? <laughs> what about this one? How's this one different? It's a little, it's a little bit living? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Has some leaves on it, right? But do they look very good? They look kind of yucky, don't they? What's wrong with them? They look dead, don't they? Yeah. One little green spot? You must be looking really hard. I don't see it. <laughs> These are kind of withery, right? They're withering and they're dying, or, or they're pretty much dead, right? Well, you know what? This reminds me of our life with or without Jesus, right? Because what is this not connected to anymore that made it die? It was connected to a tree, right? I found it out in our yard, and it, was, it used to be a part of a tree, right? But sometimes we have storms that blow our branches down, or sometimes part of the tree just withers up and dies. It depends on, on what the plants. tree... Huh? Or plants. Or the plants, yeah. So... It has to be connected to the tree to, to be alive, right? Because that tree helps it get water from the soil and nutrients from the soil. But without that tree, it can't survive, right? And that reminds us of our life with Jesus. And Jesus said that he is the vine. In John chapter 15, verse 5, it says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So pretend that, that Jesus is like the tree in this instance. He's the tree or he's the vine. And when we're connected to him, we have so much more life and so much more power and, and so much more joy in life. But we can't do anything without him. Just like these, this stick and this, this branch, even that has some leaves on it, it's still not living, right? It's still disconnected from that tree. And um, if we keep our life connected to Jesus, we will grow and we will produce beautiful leaves and delicious fruit if, it, if we're a fruit tree. What kind of fruits do you think we would produce? Have you heard of apples? <laughs> if it's an apple tree. But hey, I, us... I have an apple plant. You have an apple plant, do you? Well, if, uh, if we have Jesus in our heart and we're connected to him... We pr produce fruits of the Spirit, like joy, peace, love, faithfulness, and there's lots of other ones. But if we don't, if we're not connected to Jesus, we won't have any of those fruits, okay? So what will your life be? Will you be a beautiful branch on a tree connected to Jesus? Or will you be an old stick in the mud? Because <laughs> if, if we plant these in the mud, in, in the soil, will they grow? Even if we water them and really take care of them? No. They're disconnected. They're, they're goners, aren't they? Oh. So don't be a stick in the mud. Be connected to Jesus the vine, okay? Let's say a little prayer and help Jesus to ask, or ask Jesus to help us do that. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for being our vine and our source of power, our source of life. We know that apart from you, we can do nothing. So please help us, Lord, to stay connected to you every day so that we can live a fruitful life. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can go with Miss Donna. Martin Luther said years, years, and many years ago, 
his heart always desired to have scripture in the common tongue for men to understand, but also a hymn that we could worship together with the same song. He said, turn it loose and let the flame spread. That's a powerful source, isn't it? Is the word of God alive? <laughs> Are you alive? <laughs> yes, it is. The word of God is alive. We're going to talk about a source. S-O-U-R-C-E. What does it mean to be a source of something? What does it mean to rely on a source? What does it mean to be connected to a source? What is a source? So Webster's Dictionary, anything or place from which something comes, okay? Something that arises from it is a source. Uh, whatever is obtained or is an origin of something, something that produces something. There's a couple of other uh, definitions here I want to read too. The beginning or place of origin of a stream or a river. Uh, a book, statement, person, or supplying the information, the source of the person that's supplying it. Any of you guys have uh, favorite authors? That's, that's a source of a certain genre, okay? Uh, it also could be the person or business making interest or uh, dividend payments. Also a manufacturer or supplier. Do you guys have your favorite brands? Yeah, you do. Uh, and also it goes back to the archaic idea of it's a natural spring or fountain is a source. So something has to be coming from the source. Now, you, from the uh, devotion here with the children, you, you can almost see where I'm headed, right? Okay. Well, let's look at the etymology of the word source. From the 14th century, it meant support or base. From Old French, uh, it meant rising or beginning, fountainhead of a river or stream. A lot of it's really connected to this river idea. It goes all the way back then to talk about a fountain head. So why do I tell you guys this? Well, I want to share a few other things that I think maybe in the 2017 idea you'll totally understand. How many of you guys are health nuts? Healthy eaters? Don't you guys lie to me? Nobody here? You're like, hey, pastor that says out there we're Baptists. <laughs> right? Well, how many of you guys are, are you're, you're a little focused on how you're eating a little differently. You're, you're focused more on what you're putting in your body. You're, you're focused on that idea, okay? And there's something very near and dear to my heart. I'm going to read this latest finding. I don't know if it was from yesterday or the last year or the last 10 years. We'll think it was from uh, 1030 this morning, okay? There's good news for 108 million Americans who wake up and smell the coffee each day. Oh, raise your hand if you drink coffee. I love you all. I read a sign the other day that said decaf is only uh, uh, useful if you throw it at people. Okay. <laughs> the latest research findings suggest your morning cup of coffee may be better for you than you think. Coffee is a rich source, source of disease-fighting antioxidants. And studies have shown that it may reduce cavities boost athletic performance, improve moods, and stop headaches. If you stop drinking it, you do get a headache. And then all of a sudden you start drinking again and your headache goes away, right? Yeah, who, who knew? 10 reasons to drink coffee. Now I'm not trying to get you to, to drink coffee. Please hang with me. This makes all the sense in the world when it comes to John 15, okay? <laughs> uh, 10 reasons to drink coffee. Coffee is a potent source of healthful antioxidants, as we just said. Caffeine provides a short-term memory boost. <laughs> coffee may help protect against uh, cognitive decline. The, cogn the, the thought process? Maybe? Okay. Coffee is healthy for your heart. <laughs> Some of you are like, wrong. <laughs> no. All right. Coffee may help curb certain cancers. Coffee may lessen your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Now, I don't know how, how true all this stuff is, but it, this research says it. I found it on the internet. If it's on there, it's true, right? Okay. <laughs> Your liver loves coffee. I didn't know that. Coffee can enhance exercise performance. And the last two, coffee curbs depression and coffee guards against gout. 
There you go. That's a good one to close on, right? <laughs> All right. Well, here's some other categories. I know coffee is near and dear to my heart, but it's connected to this. My source of coffee and my choice of source of coffee is what? Dunkin' Donuts. Now, we have it. Where's Donna? Is Donna here? Where's your oh, she's downstairs probably. Uh, her source is uh, Tim Hortons. She swears up and down to me that, that Tim Hortons coffee smells so much better. And uh, then we get in a fight in the hallway and we go to our offices angry at each other. <laughs> because we hadn't had our first cup of coffee. <laughs> but it, that's our source of coffee. My source is Duncan. Her source is Tim Hortons. And some of you have your own. As a matter of fact, I remember when I first really got into coffee. was in the seminary. And I, we, we did the Javalia. Is that what it's called? Javalia. And we got the free coffee maker and all this coffee that we put in a freezer and kept perfectly nice. Right? My dad loved coffee. As a matter of fact, he wouldn't eat anything that morning unless he had the first cup of coffee. He wouldn't even eat. He wouldn't even think about eating. It took him forever to finish one cup of coffee, okay? He would drink it black. Well, I got this fancy coffee. I said, like, Daddy, you gotta try this stuff. He tried it. He ended up mixing it with Folgers. <laughs> he did not like it. I was like, what's wrong with that coffee? He was like, it does not have a good taste. I'm like, well, man, this guy knows what coffee tastes like. He's been making coffee most of his life. His dad made coffee. His dad, can I, can I, can I tell you this real quick? I didn't plan on telling you this. On the counter, I remember you guys remember those uh, clear, or, or some of them were green, some of them were pink, Rubbermaid cups that were this tall, about this big around. They came different colors. Papa would have them all strung out. He had like eight of them beside of his coffee cup or coffee maker. And he would have coffee in them all day long, but he would rotate them and he drank coffee all day. I thought Papa loves coffee. And years after Papa passed away, I asked Granny, I said, Granny, I said, why did Papa drink coffee so much? I was like, cause it wasn't just coffee. Next two areas of good information. <laughs> so coffee's a good source of energy, a source of other things, right? Here's a couple other ones. Five sources. The key word here is source. Sources of good fats. Fat's good, right? And we're like, no way. No fat. Fat is good. From oily fish like mackerel, salmon, or sardines. I love sardines. Number two, seeds and tree nuts. A good source of fat. Also, olive oil, avocado, or dark green veggies like broccoli, spinach, and kale. Okay, there's a good source of that certain area. And here's one more, fiber. Don't we all wish we had more fiber? Hmm? All right, top five areas for fiber. Beans, such as three bean salad, bean burrito, chili, or soup. Whole grains, brown rice, not white, not a good sufficient source of fiber. And then you have popcorn. I'm not sure, yeah, it's in there uh, with a lot of butter, right? And then the last one is uh, nuts, almonds, pecans, walnuts, more fiber than any other nut. Now, why in the world is that important? What I want you to do is get on track with me. First of all, if we find a good source of something, we're not going to continue uh, to, well, well, here's the thing. If we find something that is not a good source, we're not going to continue to be plugged into it, are we? No, we want the biggest bang for our buck. We're very concerned about this. We're good stewards in that area, I guess you could say. It's like, well, I'm not going to continue to go down this route. I'm going to go this route. Uh, one of the, the best brands, Daddy, for 30 some years was a, was a, uh, a welder. And he worked in the uh, a big, they co make coal tipples, T I P P L E, tipples. Tipples, it's a big, big thing that had coal in it. Okay. Uh, anyway, he made it in a big warehouse, bigger than these buildings. And he would weld. And he, he became the foreman after several years. And he had three rules. The men couldn't talk about certain things. Religion, politics. What do you think the third one was? No, it wasn't coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. No. What do you, Megan said it. Megan said, trucks. Why in the world would you not want in a warehouse full of a bunch of men that are just very rough around the neck, welding beside each other, and start talking about trucks? Why? Because someone's going to get stabbed or something, right? Because one guy's like Ford, and one guy's like Chevy, and then you got this guy back here going, Dodge. <laughs> and so you got these arguments, like they have their own brand. Now, I remember this. The first truck my wife allowed me to buy uh, was uh, back in 2007, maybe, around 2007 in seminary. And we went and looked at it, and I had two options. We had really good credit, had two options. I had a four-door Ford F-150 Larry, it's sitting there. 
all decked out, and then I had a Chevy. And it wasn't all decked out, but it had some bells and whistles. And I called my dad. I said, I got to ask my dad. So I called my dad up, and I said, Daddy, I said, uh, I said, I got two options here. I said, we can get either one of them. They're about the same price. The Ford's a couple years older. The, the Chevy's a little newer. And I told him what the Chevy had, and he goes, Chevy. Now, Daddy's had Ford and Chevy throughout his, all, all of his life. He willed and dealed. He had different trucks. You know, different. He went out for a loaf of bread and came back with a new truck, okay? I'm not, I'm not lying. He really did that. That was a great day for him. So the, th- the thing is, is he would know what to do, right? He told me Chevy. I said, well, I haven't even told you about the Ford. He goes, I don't care. He said, that Chevy will hold value more. Now, what Daddy's idea was, the source that that Chevy was made from was better than the source that the Ford was made from. Do you see what I'm saying? So we have our brands and we're connected to that for some reason because we think it's a better source. When we do research, uh, when you do research papers and stuff, some of you, you know, college students are back into that. Chris is definitely in it right now and he will talk to me. He has to come in my office and he's looking over the bookshelves. Why? Because he needs like 15 sources for one paper because you have to pull from a certain area because you have to have different sources because different people have prerogatives, different people have different filters or a different agenda. So you have to be careful where you get your source from. So we all have our favorites, right? How many of you guys would prefer, I'm trying not to make this a commercial, but would you rather go to Kroger or Walmart? Who's <laughs> it? had one Walmart there. All, everybody's like Kroger, why? You like Kroger better. Paying, oh, you get points for gas. A good source for gas, right? We're all connected to something in some way, correct? I go to Kohl's for all my clothes. I think the shirt and pants I'm wearing now are from Kohl's. My boots I stole from my brother. Good source of boots, <laughs> okay? Why is a source so important? Folks, here's what I'm driving at. And this is, it doesn't necessarily, I say it breaks my heart, but it does bother me just a little bit. We're so passionate with certain areas, certain brand names. Football season's coming up. We're so passionate about our teams. We're so passionate. You bleed it. You don't have to tell, or you don't have to walk behind somebody who's an avid follower of football to have him say, hey, you know, you don't have to walk by him and nudge him and say, hey, tell everybody football season's coming up. And he's like, I already did. I told everybody. Why? Because well, his shirt's wearing it. Everything's got logos on it and everything else. He doesn't have to be convinced to tell you where he's getting his source of fun from and his pride. You know. But what about spiritually? We, wouldn't, we neglect this so much. How many of you guys have spent a lot of time in Scripture just this week? Over the past few days? Just last night? What about yesterday? Sometime yesterday, did you sit down? Did you go to the source of why we exist? You want another meaning of life? You're going to find it right here. Don't go climbing that mountain with that guru up there. It's right here. Look in John chapter 15. And here's what we're going to do. I want you to mark this, and then I want to challenge you with something. We're going to spend several Sundays just in the first 11 verses of chapter 15. We're going to talk a lot about all of the I am statements that Jesus had. He had seven, and there are some that are very definitive. Some of them are, are metaphorical. We're going to spend time to understand why is this connected into maybe what we talked about last Sunday. Remember the past couple of Sundays we were talking about a church atmosphere, how we're supposed to handle our relationships with one another. And what it boils down to, and you'll hear me say this toward the end of the service, if we're connected to Jesus, it controls everything that we do outside of that. Relationships, outside of these doors, the mission field. If we're connected to Jesus, he controls our very behavior and the very way we approach everything. Because we are connected to that source. So let's read this. Chapter 15, chapter, chapter 15 in the Gospel of John, verses 1 through 11. Jesus starts out right away. I am the true vine. If you want to know about the I am, you can underline it each time he says it. And my father is the fine dre- vine dresser. Excuse me. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. Verse 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it, it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5 once again. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Underline, do nothing. (laughs) Verse 6. 
If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. Now verse 10 and 11. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. Now what we have to understand, this is a scene with his disciples toward the closing uh, of his ministry with them just before he's going to be crucified. He's wanting them to understand, stay connected. I am the source for everything that you're going to do from here on out. If you stay connected with me, you'll achieve everything that you need to achieve as far as God's will for their lives, especially the, li the, the will for the church. It all hinged on them, okay? So if we look at the word vine, just that word, I want to I set the, the foundation of what we're going to be studying the next few Sundays. That word vine, all right, in the Greek is amp ampelos. What does it mean? Are you ready? You got your pencils ready? Are you ready? Ready? It means vine. <laughs> That's not the word you have to focus on. Guess which word you have to focus on. I am the true vine. Let's look at that word true in the Greek. It's elathinos. Here, are you ready for this? This is what this word means. That which has not only the name and resemblance, but the real nature corresponding to the name. In every respect corresponding to the idea signified by the name. What does that mean? Real, true, Genuine. Opposite to this, opposite to what is fictitious, counterfeit, imaginary, simulated, or pretended. In, it contrasts realities with their semblances. Opposite to what is imperfect, defective, frail, or opposite to what is uncertain. Guess what Jesus is? Jesus is the source of truth. Jesus is the source of truth. Is there absolute truth? Yes. I am the true vine. What else does he say later on? John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father, that's Yahweh, but through me. Amen? It's pretty definitive. Let's look at the I am statements. I just want to give this to you. I'm going to read it for you. And then later on, we're going to revisit these a whole lot. The I am statements of Jesus. There's seven of them. The first one is in uh, chapter 6, verse 35. Also in verse 48 and 51. I am the bread of life. Okay. Then he goes on to say, I am the light of the world. Chapter 8, verse 12. And chapter 9, verse 5. Then he goes on to say, I am the door of the sheep. Chapter 10, verses 7 and 9. Then he goes on to say, I am the good shepherd. That's in chapter 10, verse 11, verse 14. Then he goes on to say, I am the resurrection and the life. That's in chapter 11, verse 25. All of these are in John. I am the way, the truth, and the life that we just said, chapter 14, verse 6. And the last one, I am the true vine, chapter 15, verse 1. Now there's one other one which I know you're excited about and you know about because you've been talking about it on Sunday nights. Revelation chapter 22, verses 16 and 17. I am the root, the descendant of David, the bright morning star. Amen? Why are these things important? It's truth. I love you, Connie. Exodus, yes, you're right. Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Do you want to turn there with me real quick? This is the closing of my sermon. This is my final statement for you this morning. And then we're going to have communion. Are you ready? Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. I'll give you a second. Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. This is another reason why I didn't like a movie that came out recently. <laughs> I'll tell you about that in a second. Exodus chapter 3, <coughs> verse 14. To me, there are certain things untouchable to make reference to in this life. This is one, if not number one. 
Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, God said to Moses, because he asked them, who sent me, what should I say, what is his name, what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, verse 14, I am who I am. And he said thus, you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Why is that so important, folks? In the Hebrew language, it's haya. Forget, forget I am who I am. I am is haya. To be, become, come to pass. Guess what? It means exist. The very nature of God, it's absolutely confusing for us to understand because he is preexistent. He existed. He is, always has been. He simply is, I am. And he's the source of everything we rely upon. Why in the world would it tell us in the book of Romans that nature exists so we were, are without what? Are without excuse. You walk outside and you see nature, you better know there's a God. You didn't put that stuff out there. No man did. I love this because we're talking about I am statements. We're talking about God revealing himself as I am. And what's our closing hymn? Just as I am. Now, before we get into that, I want to do communion. I want my deacons to come forward, prepare the table for communion. It's a wonderful celebration, especially during this week, folks, to be able to have communion together as a church family. It is open communion. If you don't go here, if you're not a member here, if you're a Christian, if you have a relationship with Christ, please take communion with us. But what I want you to do before I go in and read scripture, I want everybody just to bow your head, close your eyes. You don't have to close your eyes, just bow your head. I want you to go to introspection. I want you to begin to evaluate your personal self. Where are you at before God? Where is your relationship at with God? Is there something that you need to confess to get off of your heart? Is there something that is convicting you? Take care of it right now between you and God. It has nothing to do with the person sitting beside you. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just giving you an opportunity to do that. That's all we're doing here. And then we're going to take communion here and I'm going to read scripture. And what we have to do is we have to judge the heart rightly. That's your heart. Forget about the person beside you. Forget about conversations you had yesterday, this morning. Forget about them. Everything is between you and God right now. Because when you die, that's all it's going to be. You and God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for an opportunity once again to celebrate a meal, Lord, that you had with your disciples on the night in which you were betrayed. Thank you, God, that we can come, go through the same process, Lord. Add emphasis to the fact that your body was broken for us and your blood was shed for us as an atonement for sins. And Lord, you became that final lamb, the final lamb of God for our sins that separated us from your Father. God, we thank you for this family that's here right now as we celebrate together through this communion on a morning where we had three candidates professing their faith in Jesus Christ. We are so blessed. Help us, Lord, go from here to be blessed and become a blessing for everyone else we interact with. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to read scripture before we hand out the first part. This is what Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man must examine himself, and in so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats, drunk, eats and drinks judgment to himself, if he does not judge the body rightly. I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. Who's the bread? Go ahead, friend. You, can, don't, you don't need a mic. Go ahead and pray for the bread. Father, this time we <coughs> take the sacrament of bread, Father, in remembrance of your body being broken, Calvary, Father, for us, sinners. 
Father, you came there perfect, and you left at the hands of men. And Father, we just thank you that we can come before you, we praise you, we love you. God, as we go forward into this world, let us always remember what you did for us, Father, that we may do for you. Amen. Amen. given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. Dear Lord, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to remember what you did for us. As we take this cup, we remember that what you did for us before we even existed, before we even knew you, you laid out a plan for us and shed your blood on Calvary for the forgiveness of our sins. So we take this cup, we remember this, in Jesus' name.
said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, God, thank you, Lord, once again for this celebration and remembrance of what you did, Lord. So many years ago, you redefined the Passover feast. You challenged your disciples, and you asked for their complete devotedness to you. You became the absolute source for truth for them, Lord, so that they could go on and pass the message along that you are the absolute truth for us. God, we love you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for an opportunity again to celebrate as a Christian family. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to have the deacons stay right where you're at. I'm going to ask, do something a little different here. It's 11.02. Okay. I want uh, Taylor. Will you come forward, please? Come on up here. You can come with her if you like. Becky, will you come with them? You're like, no. Yeah, come on. Come on up here, Taylor. I just want to tell you guys who, who Taylor is. And she reached out for me maybe a month ago. Uh, she goes to Meredith Manor. Y'all know where Meredith Manor is? Okay. Uh, she's been going there for how long? A year now. She's been there for a year. And she, she was very challenged here recently. And she was very uh, concerned about her future. Now, here's what was really neat. I have a conversation with her. I don't want to go into details because I don't want to divulge, you know, any kind of information you don't want. <laughs> get a look, and then give me a dirty look later. Okay. So the thing is, is she was challenged with a lot of things, and, and she was really challenged in a new direction. What God has done is God has opened up brand new doors for her. Would you agree? He's taken her in a whole other direction. Now, here's why I brought her up. She's going back home Wednesday. We're losing her, yeah. Well, this is what happens with her. Marry this girl. They come in, and they, they're with us for a couple of years, and Becky pours into these girls, and they have a blast. They're going to have a pizza party, right, at the house? That didn't, that's a surprise, was it? No. I okay. <laughs> Maybe I should talk to people before I do things like this. But they're, she's getting ready to leave. Her parents are coming. Your mother is. At least your mother's coming in. They're going to have some fun fellowship time here. But she leaves. She goes back on Wednesday. Tell them where you live. California. Southern California, right? Yeah. Southern California, guys. I cannot believe she's leaving this. <laughs> I've been, a couple years ago, I had the privilege to be outside of San Diego, and it was unbelievable. I loved the weather there. So she's going back home. So I want you guys to continue to pray for her. Now, the reason I brought her up, she is connected to schooling. She's going to continue doing studies, but she's going to take on an, another trade, right, in leather and other areas as well. And God is going to use you. You know that's going to happen. But here's what I want to do. I want her to stay up here. Becky, you can stay up here too. we got the deacons behind. Now I want to call up all the teachers. If you're a teacher in the school system, don't make me come get you. <laughs> You guys are so excited to come forward. Everybody come up here. If you're a teacher, do me a favor. If you're a student, if you're going to college, come up here. That means, where's Chris? Chris, get up here. Anybody? Yeah, get up here. High school, you're sitting there. Y'all don't go to, y'all go to school, don't you? Get up here. <laughs> Alexis, you, you're in college. I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to start pointing people out. <laughs> Where are we at? If you're connected to school, any kind of teaching, any kind of education, I need you to come forward because we're going to pray over you to get things started, okay? Continue to come forward. All right. Is that everybody? Look around. Y'all point, start telling me who's not up here. Huh? Yeah. These two right here. Don't you want to come up? Come on up here. T drag him up here with you. He's in school too, right? Yeah. Come on up here. Shay? Who's Shay? Where's she at? Shay, come on. Tell, tell Debbie to bring you. Your mother can bring you. As a matter of fact, your mom can come up here for moral support. You got three kids up here. What is this? Come on. Come on. There's Becky. Becky, stay right there. Stay standing up because I have something else. Don't move, Becky. <laughs> Let me down here. Y'all get up here. Get crowded in. Get close to one another. You're a church family. Oh, I love this. You see, you won't come up on your own. I'll make you come up. That's what's going on. Okay. Now, Becky, come here. Is this everybody for education? I want Becky, Becky to come here. Now this, this is where my heart's broken this week for family. Becky lost her sister uh, last weekend, and uh, Dolores, and we had her services on Tuesday. And uh, I want her up here because I want to pray for her family. I want to pray for you. Oh, shh. It's like, don't get ahead, right? All right, just, I want to pray for her. I want to pray for her family because they are hurt and they are brokenhearted, okay? And not only that, there's a lot of stuff, other stuff that happened this week that involved Becky because of uh, uh, Rhonda. Where's Rhonda? Rhonda, come here. As you guys know, Rhonda lost her husband uh, last Saturday night as well. 
I think it was Saturday night, correct? Okay. Uh, Rodney, and we had a fundraiser plan. Come up here and stand beside you. Uh, we had a fundraiser plan Friday to help with medical bills for Rhonda, Rodney and Ryan, Rodney. When he passed away, my first thought was, well, now we can't have our fundraiser, you know, to help out. And then someone mentioned to me, we're still going to have the fundraiser because we need to help Rhonda pay for a funeral. She had no money to pay for the funeral. And uh, so I was like, that's a great idea. At least you can get some cash to help alleviate the pain. How, raise your hand if you've been involved in a funeral. Just, do you know the expenses? You know what, it's, you know what I'm talking about? No, not yet. Because I might say something. Hang on a second. Hang on. This is awesome. This is my moment. <laughs> it's really not. All right? That's not right. Here's what, here's what I love. I love this because I don't know if you know this yet. She probably already knows this. I talked to Linda. Where's Linda Parsons? Linda, will you come up here? Come up here. What are you still sitting there for? Come on up here. Yeah, everybody else just come for <laughs> Linda has to come up because I remember talking to Rhonda Saturday and I said, uh, well, what, oh, it was coming early. I said, I want, to come, I want to come early when the family gets there for the funeral. I want to pray over the family before they come. Can I come when the family comes? She goes, yes, and Linda. And so we had to let Linda to be, know that she needed to be there as well. Linda told me that for the fundraiser, fundraiser you were praying for at least $3,000. She was praying for 3200 at least to pull in 3200 now, I just talked to Rufus this morning. Now, don't say anything yet. Nobody say anything. I was talking to Rufus. I feel like a game show host. I was talking to Rufus. Rufus, you and Nancy were praying for a number too, right? What was the number? 4, Rufus was praying for 4,000. Linda was praying for 3,200. Guess how much we raised? $7,000. That's good stuff. Did you... Now, did you know that already? Not always. So we don't know the exact number yet. We just know that it's over $7,000. And what happened was, did God listen? Yeah. Folks, you obeyed, you cried out, and God reacted. That's what happened here. And you supported her as a church family. And I brought everybody else up here because I want to pray over the Marath Manor girls. I want to pray over the teachers. I want to pray over the students. I want to pray over the family that's broken this week. I want to pray over myself, okay? Because where's, 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 where's the Bailey family at? Where's the Bailey couple? Get up here. I worked. It's not normal, okay? I'm going to say this and you guys are going to laugh. But it's not normal, but I worked every single day this week. And it's like... Yesterday we had a great celebration because Mary walked down this aisle and rededicated herself to her husband of 40 years and their anniversary was this weekend and I asked Denzel does he does he want a moment to rethink and, and take off and get out of here and he was like it's it's he's too late right <laughs> it's, if it's another 40 years maybe you'll think about it right so we had our vow renewal yesterday and what it was was folks we met this week with heartbreak it was a lot of drama, a lot of chaos, a lot of hurt, but also at the same time celebration. And I said this at both the funerals that I did this week was I looked at my three-year-old daughter. She has no clue what's going on. But I look at them who have, who have lost life that just kind of just stopped. Life continues. And when we hurt, we all should hurt. When we celebrate, we all need to celebrate. When we need encouragement, we all should be the source of encouragement. And how is that connected? To the vine. So the next few Sundays, we're going to study how we can be t so connected to Jesus Christ that our words, our language, our conversations are so saturated with what he's doing in us because we are not good. We are, we are blessed. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to pray here. And as a matter of fact, I want to pray to some music. Carolyn, you guys, can y'all begin to play just as I am? Because, by the way, you, go ahead and play. I'm going to tell this. Growing up in Pipestem, West Virginia, old poor country boy sitting in the front pew playing with my matchbox cars, not paying attention to Pastor Johnny Atkins, sang this song every single Sunday. And he stood there and kept singing it and kept singing it and kept singing it. And finally somebody in the congregation looked over. We're not going to get out of here until he has somebody go up. You go this time. <laughs> He was dead determined to meet, make sure he reached somebody that was struggling with something. So here's the deal. The pressure's off. If you're nervous about coming forward, are you kidding me? Look at this. I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to pray for everybody here toward the end. But what I'm going to do is everybody just go to a, a, a nature of prayer. 
be sing, let's just sing one verse where you can sing one verse and I'm going to close with a prayer for everybody in here and for everybody up here and then we're going to get out of here amen is that good oh wait oh my gosh I'll do that at the end oh goodness I'll tell you what I'll do is where's my baptismal candidates where are they at they're already standing up here though all right raise your hand here's I'm going to have to give these to you, Cassie. Here's what we're going to do. Cat, they have, uh, we got them apologetic study Bibles, and we got them three devotionals, and their certificates, ladies, are, they're in there. Okay, your birth certificate. <laughs> your born-again birth certificate's in there, and it's going to be there ready to go. Okay, are we good there? Um, so they're already up here. It's already going late, and I don't want anybody to kill me. So here's what we're going to do. Let's sing one verse. Let's just go to a state of prayer. If you need anything, everybody stand up. If you need anything, come forward. Pray with me. Talk to me. Let me know what's going on. And then we'll get out of here. So let's sing. Everybody see the story of the little girl. Was she 11? How old? How old was she? 11. 11 years old. She got. She drowned. It was a part of her family. So it was your cousins. It was a hair? A long one. It was her cousin. I don't know if you guys saw the story, but it completely just rips your heart out to hear about it and hear about what happened. So I want you guys to be in prayer for that family as well. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray for a lot of different things. And I'm going to need your help right in this very moment. I'll lead it, and then we'll, we'll close it out, and we'll get out of here and have a little bit of time for Bible study. Yay! Bible school. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, this morning, Lord, we come before you as a church family. Many different areas of life right now, Lord, with celebrations, many blessings upon us. At the same time, Lord, a little bit of us has been removed with the loss of our loved ones. A little bit of brokenness, Lord, for our community, for our church family, and, and simply, Lord, for the loss of some, so many people that we begin to ask why, Lord. God, I ask that you begin to answer those questions. God, I, I just ask you to allow frustration to come out of us as we seek your face and understanding. And also, God, just give us peace that you are in control. Scripture tells us you'll never leave us nor forsake us. You'll ne never lead us astray. And God, you are not the author of chaos, and you only wish good for us. Help us, Lord, be more connected to you. You're the source of all good. And God, in order for us to be tapped into that, we have to be turned toward you, connected to you in many different ways so that we can go out into this world and proclaim the gospel. God, I love you for these people that are standing here. Many of them have different endeavors, different parts of the country. God, we're all in education at some level. And the folks that are here going in to teach these children, Lord, I pray that you give them courage, give them the heart that they need to teach these kids and to treat, to treat them as individual beings in the image of God. But also that they're going to go out, Lord, and pour into the world after they leave there. 
God, I pray for the, the kids that are in the schools learning. I pray that they look at their, their teachers with respect and understanding that they're pouring into them. They want them to learn whatever topic it is that they're teaching, Lord. And they have a teaching of passion about them. God, I pray for the brokenness for the families that are up here. And I also pray for the celebrations of reconnected vows. And I pray, Lord, for everybody that's standing in here now that didn't come forward but knows that they may have needed to. That they don't hold back any further. That they make that change within themselves. That they realize they don't need uh, clarification on worldly answers. Because God, once they have a relationship with you, they have complete peace about themselves. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for this church family that's in front of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.